I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for our daily bread right now? Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today my daily bread and I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now we bless you, Father, for today's broadcast. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the changes, the renewal of minds that you have been working in us concerning financial intelligence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are guiding us daily into the very truth that is in God's heart. Thank you. And right now, I declare every body lifted, every yoke destroyed, in the lives of everyone that is connected to us right now. Thank you for liberty and freedom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, expect a miracle today because it's coming. It's it's coming. Praise God. Yeah, so so I was sharing something to you with you yesterday. Why tight? Why am I emphasizing on tight? There are many other forms of giving. But I'm emphasizing on tithing because that one, it's a command from the Lord. And if you don't give it, there might be judgment against you. And I explained that to you yesterday, how that judgment works. You are not just withholding money. You are stopping someone else from being blessed. So it's not just about not tithing. Also, when you don't tithe right, it's as though you have not tithed. You've not given your tithe. If, if, you, if you give your tithe to Mr. A, when God have commanded you to give your tithe to Mr. B, how do you think God will accept that tithe? I explained to you last week, you know, telling you what the Lord taught me. He said, assuming you had a business with someone over in another city or wherever, you know, and, and, and the person calls you up and says, oh, that business we did together, I've just received the payment. So um, I've got your share. But you know what? I saw your cousin, I saw your brother, I saw, the, I saw that your relation, you know, that you introduced me to the other day. I just saw him at the bank, so I decided to give him your share of the money. Would you accept that? Most likely not. You will say, why didn't you tell me? So you see, the tithe belongs to God. Let that be established in your mind. The tithe belongs to God. And you've got to give it to Him. How do I give it to Him? I go before Him and say, Lord, I've got your money. What do you want me to do with it? And He will speak to you. Why? Because you want, number one, the purpose of that blessing that God gave to you to be fully established. How will it be fully established? When you give the part that belongs to others to them. Some, you know, when you walk on this, see, there are two things you're doing. You're giving, number one. Number two, you're helping the Lord to establish his kingdom and his promise of being a blessing to every family of the earth. So you see, it's a chain of blessing that you're getting yourself involved. Understand this. Now let me read another scripture to you. Galatians, you should know this one now. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Now start from verse 6. Now it says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Now this, this part is talking to you about ministering to your pastor, ministering to the one who, who brings the word of God to you. Now that's, that's a free will giving. See? That's a free will giving. 
So you, you give, you share. That's why it says you, you share with them. As you are being blessed, you share your material things with them. You share your, your physical things with them. Even as they share their spiritual things with you. That's what, that's what the relationship is. You know, sometimes we don't know how to receive the word of God. I think this is on another day's talk, but, but get, get it. Just hold that thought there. Now let's go further. That's not what we're headed for. It says, be not deceived. Follow me now. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now look at verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh. He that soweth to his flesh. Now what does it mean to sow to the flesh? To sow according to the dictates of the flesh. He that soweth to the flesh shall reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall reap of shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Now, now notice. He that sows to the flesh will receive of the flesh corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will receive of the spirit life everlasting. The sow to the flesh simply means you give according to the leading of your mind. Oh, I like that, Pastor. I'm going to give him my money. I'm going to give him my tithe. Oh, that pastor, the way he dresses. Wow, I just love, I just love that church. I just love that ministry. That's where I'll be giving my tithe from today. That's where I'll be giving my offerings from today. Oh, that pastor is my cousin. That pastor is my brother. I, I'll be giving him my tithe. No, sir. No, sir. No. You are sowing in the flesh. And all you're going to reap is corruption. I remember when the Lord was teaching me this, he said to me, he said, why do people complain that there is so much corruption in the church when they are the cause for the corruption? Like how, Lord? And he showed me the scripture. They mostly are giving according to the dictates of the flesh. You remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter Nine and six it says, it says, let everyone that give, give according to as he has proposed in his heart. Now, the actual truth of what he said is as he is led by the Spirit of God. That's actually what he meant. Not grudgingly or of necessity. You don't give grudgingly. You don't give because you are needed to give. No, God doesn't accept that kind of giving. He said, God loves a cheerful gift. Because when giving now becomes of necessity, number one, it means it wasn't planned. Number two, your mind will be on what that giving has prevented you from doing. See, so you wanted to buy a car. You, you, you had planned to buy your car. And then suddenly the pastor comes and says, Brother, Brother James, you know, we, we have not paid church rent. If we don't pay church rent today, the landlord's going to throw us out. And then he now say, ah, Brother James, please, you need to give us some money. And then you now look and look and look and say, ah, the money I have now, I'm supposed to buy a car with it. Oh, pastor, pastor. And then because you love the church, and I say, okay, so, all right, take that giving out of necessity. It looks good, but you may not be blessed from that kind of giving. But you can connect, if you are smart, you can connect that giving to the Lord. How do you do that? Before you respond, you said, okay, pastor, I've heard you. Please give me a few minutes. Give me tonight or give me, give me some time. And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I wanted to buy a car with this money. But if you need it, I'm going to lend it to you. You see, sometimes we think ourselves too little in the presence of God. Lord, if you need it, I'm, I'm willing to lend it to you. Why would you say if you need? Because the Lord was supposed to provide the money for that rent if God actually was with that pastor. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, peradventure, because God did not command you before now. So, peradventure, God had commanded someone and the person is in disobedience. And the, the, the challenge have come to the place of need. Now, I found that happen many times. <laughs> I, I, see, you see, when you practice a lifestyle of never begging, never borrowing, never asking anybody for anything, see, 
when you practice that kind of lifestyle, uh, uh, your, your, your spiritual antenna will be different because you are going to be living by the frequency that you pick in the realm of the spirit. That's how you believe it. You are conditioned to live that way because you can talk to people. So you've got to be following heaven's frequency. So there are times I'll hear from the Lord says, I have commanded someone to bring that money to you, but they are delaying. And sometimes I even know exactly who he commanded to do it. So I said, oh, should I call the person? And sometimes the Lord say, call. And I'll go, Lord, you know, I can't call and start asking for. The Lord said, call. So I pick up my phone. I say, hey, how are you doing? Hey, Pastor, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so, so. You know, God told me to send you money last week. Please, 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 let me do it right now. I didn't have to say anything. See that now? Now, why? Because I picked that in the realm of the Spirit. I picked it from the Lord. Because it's real. He has commanded someone. It's real. It's established. So you can pick it. You understand what I'm talking about? So now, when we, according to what he says here, when we give by the Spirit, guess what's going to happen? The same Spirit that led us to give is the same Spirit that will command others to give. Remember, Jesus said, Give, and men shall give unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking the ground, running over. Now, the measure, the Jesus said, the same measure you meet out, it shall be measured back to you. Now, giving by the leading of the Holy Spirit, it's a measure. When you give, ah, you know, I told you something, I said, Go to the Lord and say, Lord, if you want me to, I'll loan you this money. Because the Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Why did he say, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord? Because this is the truth. Every poor you see on the street that is hungry, it must remind you that someone is disobeying the Lord. Yeah. I'll say that again. Every poor person you see on the streets that is begging, that is homeless, should be a reminder to you that someone has disobeyed the Lord. Especially where tithing is concerned. That's why I said when we don't tithe and when we don't tithe right, there's going to be judgment. Is it because that poor person that is in that state and even dies. Now, it's not necessarily that God will send you directly to the poor person. You see, this thing is a system that works so perfectly. I told you the other day, I was with someone who needed money for school fees. And, and I didn't, at, the, at that moment, I didn't have that kind of money to give to the person. But a few minutes later, I received exactly that money that the person needed for the school fees. So I knew I had needs right at that moment. But when that money came, I knew my needs were not as important as that school fees. So I knew, and, and someone sent their tithes to me. And once the money came, I knew where this money was meant for. Now, you see how these things work. That's the provision that God had made for this school fees. Then I was the connection. So that person heard the voice of God to send it to me. Then I've got to obey the voice of God to send it to the right person and not misappropriate it. You see, sometimes you don't understand these things. God tells you, oh, give that pastor your money. Say, ah, uh, but, 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 but that pastor has money now. So why is God telling me to give? You don't know how these things work. Just obey God. You don't know if that pastor was dealing with God concerning something and praying, Lord, should I give this person this money? Should I? Because it's not everybody that asks you for stuff that you will have to give. You, you, you must have the heart of giving, understand this. Carry the heart of giving. Be, be, be ready to give to everybody. But you see, get to the point where the Holy Spirit becomes your regulator. Because there are people who, whom God is dealing with something, you know, God is dealing with them concerning something. And you, you don't go short-circuit short the whole process by jumping in and say, oh, I have money, I'll give. No, relax. Go before the Lord first. No matter how compelled you feel to give, say, Lord, 
I'm thinking of giving to this person. Because at that moment, the person has become the poor. I, I said, when you meet a poor person, note that someone have disobeyed God. Because if we all obey the voice of God, we will give where we are supposed to give. And like I told you, the Lord told me, if we will just tight, just tight, if we will all just tight right, there will be no broke person on the earth. People will get needy, but you see, their needs will always be met. Why? Because there are people obeying the Lord every day. So God will command someone, hey, make food, go to that area and give to that person in that place. God will command someone, go give that person 10,000 there. You will just pass someone and say, I want you to give the tithe of this amount to this person. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. I, 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 I will be. And then you will be God. And guess what? The whole world will begin to understand how much God loves them and how much he's poured out his blessing upon the earth. My time is up today. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.